Good morning, New Beginnings. It's me, Pastor Danish House. Today is Friday, March 25th, 2022. Thank you so much for joining me for this daily update and devotional video. I'm glad you decided to make me part of your life today, and I'm delighted that you are part of my life as well. Well, I'm recording this yesterday on Thursday, but today, Friday, we have a prayer meeting this morning at 9 a.m. in person here at the church and on Zoom. And tonight at 7 o'clock is the Van Heemst Deeper Life Group. There are no events and no birthdays on Saturday, the 26th, as far as I know. Um, on Sunday, the 27th, though, begins our big uh, International Workers Festival. Um, and so we're excited about that. It starts off with church history class at 9 a.m., our morning service at 10 a.m., redemptive compassion study at 1.30 by Zoom, uh, and the International Workers uh, Festival Conference starts at 5 o'clock. It'll be uh, here in the sanctuary. We'll be hearing from Ray Simon, whose mission is in France. Um, but also then afterwards, we'll be having uh, dinner together catered by Panera uh, in the gymnasium. So yeah, it's going to be a great, great evening. Um, and I'm not sure if Deeper is still happening at 7 o'clock. So that's our weekend schedule. Uh, if you would like to give to support the ministry of the Christian and Missionary Alliance in Ukraine, uh, you know that we're on the ground in Ukraine helping with all sorts of things and have been uh, since long before the war began. You can uh, give to https secure.commaservices.org slash comma give slash hashtag gift dash form. And I'll show that address again at the end of our devotional today. On Sunday, I preached out of 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 1 through 20. And it's not the point of the passage, but in the middle of the passage is probably one of the most controversial bits uh, in Scripture today. And uh, it's, uh, it's the Apostle Paul's um, inclusion of men who practice homosexuality uh, and sexual immorality in the Apostle Paul's uh, list of... Um, of people for whom the law came, people for whom the law came. Um, the Apostle Paul says, look, the, the law is not for those who've been set free by Jesus Christ. The law is for those who are lawless, those whose behavior, and he talks about overt behaviors, there he goes through behaviors that cover almost all of the Ten Commandments, um, that uh, these behaviors, that people who, who do these things, um, and I believe whose lives are characterized by these things, um, the law is for them to help them bump up against um, the constrictions of the law and that uh, in bumping up against the law's uh, boundaries that they'll uh, be driven towards repentance. And then, of course, the Apostle Paul includes himself in that number. So you know, this is not uh, the Apostle Paul uh, hitting people over a stick over the head with a stick as if, he's good and they're bad. And unfortunately, um, the verse has been used to hit people over the head with a stick in the past, and that's been unfortunate. Um, but why sexual immorality and why men who practice homosexuality? Why are those two terms there? Um, certainly, that is, and he's talking there about uh, violations of the commandment against adultery. This is, this is violations of, of one of the Ten Commandments. Um, and he picks those two sins sexual immorality, for one, which is kind of a broad brush term that covers all sorts of sexual sins. And he picks men who practice homosexuality as another. Why does he pick those two sins? Well, we don't know why he picks those two sins. I think uh, a part of it might be that um, those might be sins that the people who are reading Ephesians or hearing Ephesians for the first time might be more likely to identify as the sins of other people. Um, these folks primarily were Jews, although the Apostle Paul is an apostle to the Gentiles, and so there are a lot of Gentiles in the church there. But the the what we know of the the um, the heresy that the false teachers are teaching is that it does center around sort of a hyper Judaism. Um, it seems to be the case. So you know maybe these are people who identify men who practice homosexuality as other people. Uh, that the law is for other people. And then the Apostle Paul, of course, says, and I am the foremost among sinners. Um, and so the Apostle Paul turns that on its head. 
Um, but we don't fully know why he picked those two sins. What we do know is that sexual immorality, which is a broad brush term which covers all sorts of sexual misconduct, um, is, and I think would also include actually men who practice homosexuality in it. Sexual immorality is, is a common issue uh, that's common to our humanity because sex is something that's common to humanity. Uh, it doesn't matter who you are, um, our sexual lives are a distinct and important part of who we are as, as human beings. And, and the Bible doesn't just talk about sex in a few little moments where it, it condemns certain behaviors. Rather, the Bible actually has a, a fully, uh, fully orbed picture of sexuality, talking about human sexuality as part of God's good plan for human flourishing. Uh, God has planned. Uh, human, uh, sex is God's idea. It's, it's, it's something that God created us with a sexual drive and with the ability to, to fulfill that sexual drive with one another. Um, God, God's intention for sexuality is that, uh, that our sexuality be expressed uh, in a marital relationship between a man and a woman, uh, one man, one woman. Um, and his intention is that the sexual act would be unitive. It would bring people together uh, emotionally, physically, spiritually together, um, that it would be procreative, that it has, that it's open for the, the transmission of life, that new life could be created uh, through sexual union, and that sex would serve as a living illustration of the relationship between Christ and his church. Um, those are among the many good reasons why God created sex. But of course, the truth is that even though that's sort of the good picture of what sex is for, um, that is not what we experience day to day. Um, we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And we all live in a, in a world that is, is scarred by the effects of human sin. Um, I like to think of human sexuality as being like a stage in a theater on which uh, life is portrayed, right? On which a, a drama is being portrayed every single day. Uh, human sexuality is a, a stage on which we see everything about uh, 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 what it means to be human. We see our follies on display. We see our greed and our selfishness as uh, de depicted broadly on the stage of human sexuality. Uh, we see the, an attempt to turn sex into a commodity uh, to be bought and sold rather than into a relationship between two fully human people. On the stage of human sexuality, we see human cruelty often on display. We see human anger on display. If sex is communication, if, if sex is a form of communication between two people, then all of the emotions that human beings have are communicated during sex. Uh, I know that uh, sex, there's such a thing as angry sex, right? There's such a thing as cruel sex. There's such a thing as sex that demeans another person, just as there's sex that is joyful and uplifting and wonderful. Um, on the theater of human sexuality, we see misplaced love misplaced desire. Uh, our resentments can be played out on the uh, stage of human sexuality. What if you're uh, married and, and you want to have sex one day, but your partner does not? Um, and what if it's been a long time before your partner has wanted to have sex with you? Um, resentment can build up in the area of our sexuality. So the human sins are on display, but also the ways in which we've been sinned against and have been broken by others. Uh, all of our brokenness is on display in human sexuality. That includes abuses that affect our sex drive, abuses that, uh, that uh, have been piled upon us that can make sex seem like a torture to us rather than a blessing. We see our insecurities played out on the stage of our sexuality, where maybe we don't want to be seen in our nakedness. Maybe we want the lights to be off because we don't want our bodies to be seen. Maybe we're ashamed of, of this or that feature of our bodies. 
Maybe we're insecure about our abilities uh, in the sexual arena. Maybe we've seen too much pornography and we start to compare our own body parts with those of the people we've seen, or maybe we uh, attempt, we uh, judge our ability to have sex based on the things that we see uh, in pornography or on the movies. Maybe uh, our physical disabilities, which are part of life in a fallen world, play into our sexuality. Uh, we know that there are some people who are born intersex, right? Who, uh, whose uh, genitals uh, don't match their chromosomes or who have no genitals um, or whose genitals are, are interior to their body. Um, the, you know, these are all sorts of things that come that are not the fault of the person, it's not the sin of a person, but that are part of the human drama played out on the stage of human sexuality. So we were created with a good plan for our sexuality, but the life that we live right now is not, uh, doesn't reflect that good uh, plan all the time. Uh, it reflects our sins and it reflects the effects of sin on us. But Jesus, of course, came to redeem what's lost and broken in this world. Jesus comes to repair us. Jesus comes to heal us. Uh, and that includes our sexual selves as well as every other aspect of our lives. Part of that are the boundaries that uh, even in the Christian church are set, us, set, al um, set alongside our human sexuality to help us to channel our sexual urges and also to help us to relate to one another in an honorable way sexually. But redemption, even the redemption of Christ uh, in this world, we know to be a partial thing. Now, Jesus came to redeem us fully, but our experience of it is partial in this world. It's progressive. It grows over time as Jesus heals us over time. And it awaits its full completion when we are resurrected and have new bodies in heaven and are are resurrected to new life with him. We're living in between the, the, the inauguration of the redemption of Jesus and the completion of the redemption of Jesus uh, in the future. In the, between the now, we are now redeemed, and the not yet, we're not fully redeemed. Uh, that's part of our sexuality, just like it's part of every other part of our lives. Now, it's not my place to judge you because you sin differently than I do uh, sexually. I am a sexual sinner. You're a sexual sinner. We are all sexual sinners. I am broken in my sexuality and you are broken in your sexuality. We all are broken in our sexuality. It's not my place to judge you for the ways in which you're broken or to judge you for the ways in which you sin sexually, just like I hope you will not judge me for those things in my life. But it is my place to come alongside you and to encourage you toward both righteousness and healing, uh, even as you come alongside me and encourage me to righteousness and healing. If sexuality is the theater on which human follies are displayed, sinfulness and brokenness, sexuality can also be the theater for the glory of Christ to be displayed as we are healed bit by bit and made more and more into his image as our sexuality comes more and more to reflect the good plan that God has for us. Uh, sex is intended to be a living illustration of the relationship between Christ and his church. And that's both through the glories of sort of the marital union, but I think also it's through the repair that Jesus does in our lives along the way. Um, Jesus, is, Jesus Christ came into this world to save sinners. Jesus came into this world as the great physician to heal those who are sick. Um, and this is true about our sexuality just as much as it's true about every other part of our lives. My hope is, brother, sister, that today, A, that you would recognize that uh, you don't have it all together in your sexuality, just like I don't have it all together in my sexuality. I hope also that today you'll recognize uh, that uh, that other people are broken just like you are, and that uh, that we need each other, even in the area of sexuality, growth in our sexuality. Uh, we need Jesus, especially, to come and heal us day by day. Let's not judge other people, but let's pray for other people. Let's show compassion to other people, and let's start with a humility that recognizes that we don't have it all together either. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for your love for us. Thank you so much that in your love for us, you created us as sexual beings. 
And Lord, our, our sexual nature, our nature as sexual beings today, doesn't necessarily reflect um, how you want us to live. We're all broken. We're all sinful. We've all experienced the sin of others in our lives. And uh, our lives, our sexual lives are not the ideal. Um, that's not a reason for us to feel guilty, but it is a reason for us to give it to you and to say, Jesus, please heal me. Jesus, please forgive me. Jesus, please help me. And Jesus, please help my husband. Jesus, please help my wife. Uh, Jesus, please help my brother, my sister, my friend. Uh, help us to live in ways that glorify you in our sexuality. But some of the boundaries that you set around sexuality in the scriptures to some of us seem uh, difficult. Um, and to, But to all of us, the brokenness we have in our sexuality is something that needs Jesus to address. So Lord, please work in our lives, I pray. Lord, be with uh, the prayer meeting today at 9 a.m., be with the Deeper Life group tonight at 7 p.m. And I pray for the, the start of our missions conference on Sunday with church history class, the morning service, redemptive compassion, the choir rehearsal, the international workers conference, and perhaps deeper. All the things that are going on, Lord, I pray that you would bless our, our New Beginnings Church as we strive to, to be your people in this place, in this world. Lord, we love you and we trust you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, New Beginnings, thank you so much for joining me for this daily update and devotional video. I love you and I look forward to talking to you again tomorrow.